Hello, everyone. Appreciate the opportunity, uh, everyone being here for me preaching for the first time. Let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach your word and to share what we need to know, Lord. Pr please convict hearts, open hearts, open minds. So we meditate on your word and that we'd apply your word this whole week. Pray that we'd continue to grow. Uh, people, that would, people would become more faithful that they come to services uh, more and more. It's nothing that I can do, Lord. Just preaching what you want me to say. It's your word. It's your truth. Pray that you'd use me every day. Help me not to talk too much, Lord. Help me to slow down a little bit. Pray that this church would be revived, Lord. Pray that, thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please be patient with me. I'm going to have everyone stand as we read the first verse. It's going to be in Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So the, soul, the theme this morning is be a warrior for Christ, or this evening. Thank you, you may be seated. So tonight I want to focus on what it means to be a warrior for Christ. So I have four points this evening. So number one, know who is your leader. So we are commanded to go out to the world and preach the gospel. But who commands me to do that? So look in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I am commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So notice it's Jesus commanding us in this verse. Look in verse 19 where it says, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, the three in one. Therefore, God is your leader. And it's important for you to know that. You can't be a warrior for Christ without knowing God, without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's impossible. You can't fight for him without knowing him. You, so you need to first believe in Jesus Christ, that he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. It's the gospel that we're supposed to preach every day. So the moment you understand who Jesus Christ is, what he did for us on the cross, we will see the world differently. The moment you understand that, So how do we know that? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. It says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. So for example... So we see good things. So yeah, something we think is good before we saved, after we're saved, we might see, oh, that wasn't good, that was bad. Our eyes are open so that we can move forward with life. We understand, we discern right from wrong. 
And how we do that is first we confess our sins to the Lord. And through that faith is how we are saved. So it's just the difference that the world sees things that we see things. We have a new mind. Maybe you see someone, you don't really think about what they are, who they are. You're just going around, you're talking. But what if you say something to offend them? Or what happens there? It starts to boil inside of them. Maybe uh, in your heart, it just starts to boil and it festers there. And that will affect you to say something. And that, that becomes sin. So we need to be careful with that. Sometimes the flesh will boil within us and it will change what we say or what we do. And we need to be careful how we move forward with that. And you could even be wrong with that. Like you might blame the wrong person for something and that just causes even more problems. So we don't need to focus on that person but really, we just don't need to worry about that person. That's, that's not our responsibility. Look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So clearly we see here what we're in war with. We're in war against spiritual things. So physical things that we see, it's not really what we're fighting. It's, it's our flesh. It's what we're fighting on the inside and how we control that. That's what the devil the devil wants to confuse us, though. That's, that's his plan. The devil likes to cause confusion. So you need to, first, the first point is you need to know who commands you. And the second point is you need to know who your enemy is. And you can't know who your enemy is without knowing who your leader is. So we need to be careful. Look in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 'Be sober, it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So without knowing who your enemy is, you don't have anything to defend yourself with. So the devil can use any type of trick that he wants to trick you against God. And he's the one who causes the temptation, who causes the confusion or stray thoughts to fight uh, in your mind. So what can we do about this enemy? So the first thing is simple. In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So now when you submit to God, you can put on the armor of God. So then you can fight against the devil, against his plans. You can't put on the armor of God without accepting and submitting to God. It's impossible. So first, 
you need to know who your commander is. Second, you need to know who your enemy is. And then the third is you need to know how to defend yourself against your enemy. You need to know what your resources are, what your weapons are that you can use to fight against the devil. Look in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Or 14, sorry. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. I want to to expound on this first part. What is truth? Look in John chapter 17, verse 17. It says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So our loins are good about with his word. His word is truth. So without that truth, we lose. So go back to chapter 6, verse 14 in Ephesians. It says, in having on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to look at this verse and try to figure out what this breastplate of righteousness is. I want to expound on this a little bit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. And it says, but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love. So the breastplate here is of faith and love. It's not going to be on the screen, but we know God explains to us what faith means. In Hebrews, we talked about it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So our belief and faith in God. We've never seen Jesus Christ in the flesh, but we know when we die, we go to heaven, we'll see him. We know that without a doubt. And the Bible explains to us what it is, um, what love is and charity So it it envieth not, it's not proud. It it explains it to us, it's simple, and that all becomes your righteousness. That's all the breastplate of righteousness. And you can't use the resources available to you if you don't know what they are. So we need to understand what these are so we can use them. Look in verse 15, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. So we have our loins girt about with truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness. Now, what do you do with your feet? You cover them up with the gospel. It says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we all know we're commanded to go out to the world and preach the gospel to everyone out there. And what is the gospel? Jesus Christ, his... So Jesus Christ gives you peace, not the world. The world does not give you peace. Jesus Christ is the only one who can give you that peace. And we need to have our feet prepared to know where to go, where God can call us. We can't know where to go if there's no one there to lead you. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's clear in God's word. I mean, God's word is the lamp. It shows us where to go. Without it, you, you don't know where to go. You're, you're stuck in the darkness. You don't know which direction, where to, what path to take. Go to 
Go back to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to look in verse 16 now. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So that shield of faith, I can resist all the evil things of the world. So through God, we can overcome the world. It's not through us. It's through that faith that we can have victory and then we can share the gospel with that. And why can we share that? Because he rose from the dead. So how do we accept this faith also? Through hearing. And hearing through the word of God. And everything that we use comes from the word of God. Now look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. In verse 17 it says, And take the helmet of salvation I'm going to expound on this real quick. So the helmet of salvation what exactly is that? We're going to dive into this a little bit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8 it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, but the last part, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So that, that phrase there, hope of salvation, what does that mean? Does it mean I'm, oh, I'm hoping I'm saved? I really hope so. No, we, we know that for sure. Amen. We know 100% for sure. There's no doubt there about our salvation. You can't allow doubt to creep in. So after you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's it. You're, you're saved. Amen. So don't take off the helmet. Don't take off that helmet of salvation. Verse 17, the last part of that, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So I'm going to focus on the sword of the Spirit now. So we already know the Bible is the sword. It's, it says in uh, Hebrews it's a double-edged sword. So we need to be careful sometimes what we say to people. If we don't know how to properly what to properly use, what scripture to use, if we haven't studied in that, the devil can use that confusion to creep in. He can, he can influence chaos there. So we shouldn't fight without the proper resources. We need to be careful with that. So if we don't, we don't know how God's word will work without studying it. We need to learn to rightly divide the word of truth. We don't want to help the devil. We, we want to fight against the devil. Says the devil can use it against you because he knows the word of God and even used against Jesus in the wilderness when he tempted him in the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, we're going to use that story a little bit. So the devil, so Jesus himself, he was tempted by the devil. And the devil asked Jesus, why can't you change this stone into bread? And Jesus says, no, 
we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So then the devil, okay, he tempts him again. He says, hey, 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 okay, okay, forget about the stone. So it says in Scripture that if you fall, the angels can catch you. So jump off this and let the angels catch you. Jesus says, no, wait, hold on. The Bible says, don't tempt the Lord thy God. So this third one is very important. The devil says, all right, I'm done with that. So he goes up to the top of the world. He says, all right, if you worship me, I'll give all this to you. And Jesus says, hey, no, no, no. Okay. I worship only the Lord my God. The point of that situation, that story, you don't know God's word if you don't study it. You can't use his word to fight like Jesus did. The devil can trick you and butter you up to try and trip you up. We can't use God's word if we don't know it. If you want to know something, you study it, you learn it. You learn how to use the weapons God has given us. So God is your commander who's given you these weapons to use. So you know the devil is the enemy. You can't defend yourself and fight against him without weapons. It's impossible. And without God, you can't fight him. It's impossible. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. I don't want to catch anyone sleeping, right? <laughs> okay, you ready? We need to be ready to preach God's word. Why? Because if we're not ready, we can't use his shield. Like, if I'm, if I'm tired and I'm sleeping, I'm not going to be prepared to fight against the devil. The devil is going to throw his darts at you and dampen your spirit. We, we can't use our sword if our arms are just hanging at our sides. So we need to be prepared. I have the faith of God. I'm, I'm protected by his faith. I'm protected by the word of God. His word helps you. So that I can use it. My feet are planted. My shield is out. My sword is ready. I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to fight against the devil. I'm going to keep my eyes on God. So I can fight the devil. I can keep my faith and keep my eyes on God and not falter. So once you know what the armor of God is and how to use it, it's important to pray to the Lord. So we put on the armor of God, but we also need to pray for one another to help God or help, have God help you with your demons and your fights every day. Because every day we go out into the world and we have battles. And it's easy to become lazy in that. And God can help us fix that and help us improve that. I want to point out something to you. So as a Christian, I, I can pray for me every day. I can use the shield every day. But what if someone else, another Christian, doesn't know how to use a shield? 
I teach him. I, I encourage him how to use his shield, how to pick it up and use it to fight the devil. And how to use his spiritual gifts. So the Bible explains that you have a gift and how we need to know how we can use that, how to encourage people and how to use that in the church and serve him. The most important thing is they need to know the gospel. The world can't know the gospel without us. They can't know, Christians out there can't know how to use the armor of God without us telling them. We need to go out into the world and fight against the devil and show these people the armor of God. We need to encourage one another. Because when we encourage someone to know how to use their armor, they can grow. Look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Please pray for one another. Encourage one another. It's our duty as Christians to love one another. Because when we love one another, God, we need to love one another as God loves us, with all our heart and soul and mind. That is a commandment that we are required to follow. Sorry, give me a minute. So number one, we need to know who our commander is, know who our leader is. Number two, we need to know our enemy, who to fight. Number three, we need to know our weapons and our equipment, how to use it. And number four is very important. We need to know the cost. When you decide to be a, become a warrior for Christ, you need to know the cost. Why? Jesus Christ went to the cross. It cost his life. So, so we can have life through him. He gave his life so we can have life through him, through Jesus Christ. So through that sacrifice of his blood, he purchased us. He purchased our bodies. By crying out to the Lord and calling on his name, we can be saved. That's when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. We already belong to him. As soon as we accept him into our hearts, we belong to him. So when we walk with Jesus Christ, when we walk with the Lord, we'll find some people in the world, they'll look at you strange. They'll, like, wow, you walk different, you act different. It's, it's strange. I'm going to stay away from you. It's, you know, you're a little weird. <laughs> it's simple what the Bible explains here. It's not a surprise. It's not a shocker. So they belong to the world, I belong to God. The world may hate you, but remember, Jesus Christ, they hated Jesus Christ before us. The world hated Jesus Christ first. So if we think about it and try to let it overwhelm us, why does the world hate me? Why does everyone not like me? 
they hated him also. So why am I worried about them hating me? He, he gave me life. My, my focus should be on him. The world shouldn't stop me. I need to follow him. So just because we're standing for Jesus Christ and our faith in Jesus Christ, maybe we'll lose friends. We might. We might lose family. We, could, we can lose our job because of it. I mean, many different things could happen. So some people are, uh, about this whole vaccine thing is splitting people. So a lot of jobs are saying, you have to get the vaccine to work for us. Stand for truth and right. I mean, it's your decision. If you feel it's not right, anything like that, any, any type of conflict there. So if you believe the vaccine conflicts with the Bible. I mean, some countries, like... Um, Basic any other country that doesn't believe against Christian or believes in Christianity, they they're against Christianity. They're going to stand before the Lord one day. Sacrifice or God, Jesus Christ gave His life for them. So there's always two sides. But here, one side is full of warriors, full of Christians, fighting for Christ. And the other side is the world. I'm going to start with the people who have not been saved yet, the world. If you look in Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 35, says, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. What, is, what does this mean? It's simple. Sacrifice your life for Jesus Christ. Become a warrior for him. You can't be in the warrior group if you're not saved. For Christians and warriors... Please continue, persevere, stay right for the Lord. The world will try to hurt you and cause trouble. Jesus said himself, worry not, I, I'm overcoming the world. I beat the world. I overcame death. I can beat the world. You know the term a wall. Uh -huh. So people will lose confidence and trust in the Lord. So people who keep their, their stay for Jesus Christ in the judgment, it'll be worth it. 
and the people that aren't saved, that those that quit. So when you stand before God, if you're not fighting for him, you will be ashamed for what you missed out on doing. I want you to be able to stand before God and him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Let God lead you. Be, be confident. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Someday, we'll all die. And when we die, we will stand before God. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 14, verse 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow. They will bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Every knee, every person. Doesn't excuse me, that, that includes me, that includes people that don't know God, people that do know God, everyone, every knee. So the two sides in the end. The people who will be into heaven, who will have access to heaven. The other side will go to hell. Most of you already know my, my dad passed away. I really wish he was here to watch me, but one thing I know for sure, he's saved. So, I already know which side he's on. He's on, he's, he's a warrior of Christ. He's in that group. He's on the winning side. I don't know about you, but I'm saved. I know for sure I'm on the winning side. Excuse me for just a moment. So if you've not yet been saved in here, please, don't miss this opportunity. Don't leave. (laughs) His watch is ringing. Uh, Ryan told Caden that uh, I have a specific time, or I told Caden that I have a specific time so I can end. (laughs) So my time's almost up. I'm almost finished. (laughs) So seriously, seriously. Anyone watching me, anyone that's here, don't miss this opportunity to miss out on God. Come to the altar. Contact the pastor. Contact the church. Because without God, so uh, an experience that 
someone had with chemotherapy, talking about the struggle, he was frustrated. But he still knew the Lord. My dad could say he, he had a good fight. He kept his faith. I know he's in heaven where there's no more tears, there's no more pain. <laughs> My first time of crying. <laughs> so I know when I die and I get to heaven, I'll see him again. I'll see him in heaven. Amen. I promise you, he'll tell me what a glorious day that will be when I see Jesus Christ. When I see my dad, when I see my grandma, when I see my mom, my other grandpa, and so many people I'll see up there. And the world, the life here in this world is short. You can get through the battle. You can get through the struggle, the fight. Because God will overcome that opposition. God will overcome the world. We're already on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. I'm not involved in sin no more. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord. I'm on the winning side. I'm going to close in prayer. Dearly Father, thank you. Thank you for calming my tears, calming my, my nervousness. Thank you for the comfort that the gospel, that truth gives to us. Pray that everyone understand would understand what it means to be on the winning side. To understand why you've chosen us. You've given us the spirit of truth. Without knowing truth, we, we won't know the enemy. I pray, Lord, that you'd give me the strength to use the resources and the weapons you've given me to fight against the devil, against the enemy. That you'd use the word of God to comfort us and comfort everyone here, to encourage us and inspire us, help us to pray for one another, I pray that, Lord, that we know the cost. That we'd live every day for you. And I can, I can trust in you who died for me. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to surrender to become a pastor. I pray, Lord, that you please convict everyone's heart here. Maybe they're not called to be a pastor or a deacon. But I pray that you just encourage them to use their, their gifts, their talents in this church. Pray, Lord, that this church would grow, that you'd lead. Thank you for your grace to us, your love for us. Thank you for everything you've done for us. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen.